Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our STL programming series. In today's lesson, I'm going to be showing you something that I'm surprised I haven't shown you yet. And that's how to make a rotating texture here. This is actually something built into SDL2 or the upcoming SDL3 API as well. So I want to go ahead and show you this step by step. But the important lesson that we're going to see here with this particular demo is that if I do a collision here, Again, I'm not doing it with a rotated shape. In fact, we're going to need to learn about oriented bounding boxes in a future lesson, so make sure you subscribe in order to understand this. But with that said, let's go ahead and do a brief review here, and I'll go ahead and show you how to get your textures rotating. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and do a quick review of some of the code here. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do here just to get us started is set us up with a simple scene here. So again, this is a little bit of a recap if you're jumping straight into this series. Uh, but if you're watching the other lessons, you can go ahead and fast forward. But the idea here is, again, we're going to set up our window, set up a renderer here, and then ultimately set up a texture to render to. Now, of course, when we load up our pixels here, we create our texture on the GPU, and then we can free our surface, meaning freeing our pixels here once we're done with them on the CPU, because that memory has already been uploaded to our GPU. The next idea here is that we're going to need some rectangle to draw on. Now, shortly, I'm going to add a rectangle for, well, where our texture is going to be pasted, and we'll see an outline of that rectangle or that 2D bounding box. And then eventually, I'm going to draw a rectangle wherever the mouse is so we can indicate where there is a collision here. And we can actually draw that intersection if we'd like, which I think will be a good idea to do. So we will uh, implement that. And then otherwise, we've just got our regular SDL loop here, which is just going to run our application until we terminate here. I'm going to go ahead and capture the mouse state here, storing the mouse X and the Y positions in these variables. And you could probably do this in one step here by just storing them directly in the rectangles X and the Y position, which are going to be updated every frame. But anyways, that's breaking the um, problem into two different steps here. And then ultimately, I'm going to clear our screen here to a black color, then set drawing to white for our first rectangle, and then just directly draw that here. And then just present that to our renderer. Okay, so let's go ahead and recompile, rebuild, and do this much here. Oops, looks like I have one little uh, mistake here. Uh, let's go ahead and comment out these guys here, because we'll create that rectangle in a moment. And again, that gives us our rectangle here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just build this example up here. And where I'm going to go ahead and start is by giving us our rectangle to draw where our mouse is. So let's go ahead and uncomment these lines here. And I'll also want to store the intersection as well here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and actually uh, uncomment out our intersection code and draw our rectangle here. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and briefly walk through this as well. And basically, this gives us a little demo here where I've got my rectangle that's static. And then if I intersect, I go ahead and flip the color to red here. So I'll move the window out of the way here, but basically that's the logic here. I'm just changing the actual color that I'll draw, and then I'm always drawing the rectangle uh, from the top left corner of where my mouse is here. So again, the important thing to understand from this illustration is how the intersect rectangle function works. It's just checking if there's an overlapping position by looking at the corners of the box. Uh, and I can go ahead and illustrate that uh, here by basically just testing this corner against some other shapes corner here and using the width and the height of both these shapes to detect if there's some sort of intersection here okay at any particular point here so that's the basic idea now sdl actually does store this uh, intersection here which is kind of neat here since it knows exactly uh, our coordinate uh, and where the intersection is of two rectangles um, and we can actually draw that out here. So I've got this rectangle uh, as well. So we should say if there is a intersection, let's go ahead and draw it. And we'll go ahead and draw that intersecting section here. Let's go ahead and draw it in uh, blue here. Um, although it is going to uh, perhaps overlap, uh, but that's okay here. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, if we go ahead and rerun this here, we're going to get a mix of some sort here, but we can see where that intersection is uh, across these rectangles here. So that's kind of neat for the demo purposes. And there's uh, a variety of reasons you might want to do this for various collision uh, mechanisms here. 
Now, again, today I'm going to be showing you how to rotate a texture, but again, that's not necessarily rotating this bounding box here. So again, we are going to have to look at other collision methods to determine basically if the axes of each of these rectangles are uh, overlapping at any point here. Okay, so we'll need a little bit of math for that. That'll come in a future lesson, so just uh, stay tuned for that. But let's get to the key part today, which is about rotating uh, our actual texture here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is we'll dive into the documentation here uh, as soon as I show it here. Uh, and I could go into the SDL docs here uh, for the front page for two, or you can change in the URL for uh, three, uh, as that is the version in progress here. And if you're searching for this, you can search for render copy uh, X here. Uh, which copies a portion of the texture to the current rendering with optional flipping and rotating. Um, but it is also important to know that there is going to be, uh, if you just search for rotate, SDL render texture rotated. For those of you who are building on SDL 3, I don't believe there's been an official release at the time of this recording. Uh, it's basically the uh, a better named function, I would say, but all the same parameters here. Okay, So whether you're using SDL 3, SDL 2, doesn't matter. You'll see the same uh, list effectively of the uh, parameters here. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go with the SDL2 one since that's what we're watching now. But again, if you're on SDL3, just call this function instead. So anyways, as far as this goes, uh, as far as this works here is we need our render, our source texture. Uh, we're going to use the entire texture for this, so the texture that we loaded in memory. The destination, so that's going to be our uh, rectangle uh, that we have set up here. So let's go ahead and uh, put the corresponding uh, rectangle here, right? That's just this one here, this destination. And then the angle, the center, and then the flip, okay? So the angle is going to be, again, how many degrees, like if you want to think about this like a clock rotating 360 degrees, uh, as simple as that. Um, and it will rotate it, again, in a uh, clockwise direction. Again, you can just flip this depending on your convention. Um, you know, if you're using this alongside some other toolkit or math library, just keep that in mind. Uh, the center point about which you'll rotate around. Okay, so this is kind of important uh, to think about. But again, if I have a rectangle like this, the default, which let's go ahead and get all the documentation here, is just to rotate around, well, halfway of the width and halfway of the height. That's uh, this portion uh, here. Uh, and basically just rotate around the center right, uh, in a clockwise direction. So here's where we're rotating. Now, if I pick a point here, like here, then we're going to get this sort of, uh, let me sort of illustrate, uh, you know, 45 degree rotation about the center here, right, gives you something like that, right? It's, it's rotating in this direction here. But if I have some other rectangle here, and I want to rotate about this point, right, that's going to rotate me clockwise here. And 45 degrees is going to look something uh, like this here. OK, so we'll play around with both here just so you can see. But that'll get me sort of rotating. This is sort of the, the pivot point that I'm rotating about. OK, so that's the idea there. Now, the flip allows you to uh, flip the texture. If you click on this, there's three different modes. I'm not going to do anything here. But uh, again, this is a way to flip or mirror the texture horizontally or vertically. You could use this for a trick like a reflection or something, like if a character was looking out in the water. Um, and that texture was a copy, right? You could just uh, flip it, All right? So a flip is sort of like a rotation in some way, um, but that's the basic idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and play around with this. Um, and again, if you want to look at the the code for this, you can look into the SDL renderer here. That's where this, uh, you know, the uh, function uh, pointer is for this in the renderer uh, struct. Um, and then of course I've got the intersect. Uh, rectangle function, which again is just doing the calculation of the rectangles. So nothing to do with this actual rotation, which I'm about to show you here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, rotation. Again, this is for SDL uh, 2. And then SDL uh, 3, let's just go ahead and uh, for the future, because we'll want to also uh, keep an eye on this. Uh, basically, this is the prototype of our function here. I'm just going to paste it in here, and you'll see that it looks uh, exactly the same, uh, minus the name here. Whoops. Uh, let's paste that in here. And there we go here. Okay, so you can see what the uh, parameters are and so on. 
Okay, so that'll be the, for the future if you uh, need here. But again, you can just line things up. So again, the texture that we're rotating, uh, and again, we're just sort of copying this into our buffer here, okay, for this render, our texture. We want the whole texture. Uh, it's going to be in the rectangle, the angle that we're rotating about. And I'm just cheating here. I'm just using a static variable here that's initialized once. And I'm just going to increment it so that it uh, rotates about slowly. The center point, again, if I don't specify anything in here, I'm just creating an STL point with the default. Again, the, the middle of that rectangle. So it rotates, again, sort of like a clock. Uh, and then no uh, flip here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And we get something uh, nice like this. Okay, so you can see it rotating just about the middle here. Uh, and again, though, um, you know, my collision detection has nothing to do with the actual rotated texture. So if you want to handle that again properly, right, if you have a character in a game or something that rotates 45 degrees and moves up, right, you'll need to orient that bounding box potentially if you want more precise collision. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, again, let's play around with this just a little bit here. Uh, with the center points. Uh, let's just keep a copy of that for now. And let's just go ahead and set it at the rectangle uh, X and the Y position here. How about that here? Just so you can see the different uh, rotation here. Uh, there we go. So you can see sort of how that works, but we're not quite getting, you know, that corner um, like I illustrated here. Uh, so let's go ahead and see uh, in this example where I wanted to rotate about the corner here. Okay, so let's maybe think about what's going on and just try out some values, right? What is my rotate uh, rectangle X and Y? That's sort of in the global like coordinates, this this corner right here where my mouse cursor is. All right, if I scroll up, oops, um, that would be like, you know, position 50, 100. Uh, but really when we're rotating here, this point here, let's just go ahead and put zero uh, and zero. Okay. And we'll go ahead and pop this in here. And now we'll actually see we are rotating about that corner here. Okay. So it's sort of that point is sort of local to, um, you know, this point here, right? That's the offset from the top left corner of the rectangle. Okay. So depending on the different types of rotations that you want to create, that might be again, what you want to do here. Okay. So, um, Let's go ahead and close that there. Um, I'll go ahead and just leave a comment here. This is the local rotation uh, within the uh, rectangle. Okay. Uh, so this will be an example of the top left corner. And I'm going to just comment these out and we'll uh, go ahead and do the uh, center. Okay. of the rectangle. Okay, so you just have to know the API, play around with it a little bit, uh, and that's the idea here. Uh, now let's try one of these other uh, modes here, STL flip, uh, and I believe it was just horizontal. Click on uh, render flip. Yeah, horizontal here. Um, let me let you look at the texture once, just so maybe you can see what it looks like. Uh, you know, I got a screen capture of Blender 3D. <laughs> so, you know, some, some uh, objects there uh but let's go ahead and just see if there's a difference horizontal there we go and looks like we gave that a go here and let's see did it do a flip it did i mean it might be hard to tell but let's see if you see this uh chipmunk or whatever this is on the tree on the right side here and then we'll undo our change and then we'll see that uh, chipmunk, wait, we got to wait for it to go all the way on the left side here. Okay, so it did effectively a uh, flip here. All right, so that's the idea with rotating uh, textures here. Now, as far as I know, in the SDL API, we don't have a way to just rotate the rectangles, but we can rotate the textures. We can do that in GPU memory uh, relatively uh, efficiently with some transformations. So maybe that's how that's uh, actually uh, done here, but uh, that's quite neat here. So anyways, folks, with that said, just a quick lesson on something that we haven't uh, covered yet, actually uh, a little bit surprised, but uh, a fun lesson here uh, with, you know, uh, a few different things putting together and reminding us of some things in previous lessons that we have here. So anyway, stay tuned. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about some collision schemes and those types of things coming up. If you'd like to see those, uh, feel free to comment below and I'll look forward to hearing your discussion. But until then, uh, thank you for your time and attention. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.